time and chance happened to them all. Now, ordinarily speaking, all those things he's saying should naturally lead to the results. Are we together now? Yes. If it has to do with racing, the swift is who should win. If it has to do with battle, the strong is who should win. If it has to do with bread, the wise is who should have the bread. If it has to do with riches, it is understanding that should bring it. If it has to do with favor, skill, good understanding. But it says there have been occasions where everybody had those things and still did not have the result. Psalms 127, popular Psalm and verse 1. Psalms 127, God is helping us. Psalms 127, please, and verse 1. Except the Lord builds a house. When you read this from Amplified, it adds a lot of other things. It doesn't just say a, a house, a home, a destiny. Except the Lord builds a house. Is it Amplified? I think one of the versions, it says, They labor in vain that build it. Then it says, Except the Lord watches or keeps a city, the watchmen work it but in vain. Verse 2. It says it is vain for you to rise up early and to sleep late. To sit up late. To eat the bread of sorrows for so he giveth his beloved sleep. That means that the moment you see the subject of wealth in the kingdom as my personal achievement, you have lost the support of God. So when people look at you and say, how come at age 21 you are a multi-millionaire and you love Jesus? You will let them know that God is the one who lifts, God is the one who blesses, and that you have been trusted with it. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. If then you have agreed that you are a steward and not an owner, the Bible gives us an instruction in First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, let a man so account of us. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Let a man so account of us, it says, as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. The instruction is in verse 2. It says, moreover, it is required in stewards, ministerial stewards, financial stewards, parents, anything that has to do with being trusted with and anything from God. It says that a man be found faithful. This is very powerful. Faithfulness is what God is looking for. When you know I am not an owner, that it only wealth and abundance. You know, people send me all kinds of text messages and they say, Apostle, look at the marvelous thing God is doing. You know, and sometimes they say, Marvelous thing you are doing all across. I'm very quick to correct them. No man can do these things except God be with him. There are things men cannot do, truly. Whoever you want. To lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want. To say, Lord, you can say. That is the mentality of one who is ready to be used to do marvelous things. In as much as I'm teaching on finance, I want you to know that this is truth that is applicable across every area of your life. That I may decrease, he says, that you may increase. So when they look at you and see Jesus, you are ready to really, really, really be trusted with great things in this kingdom. All blessings come from God and belong to God. All blessings come from God through men to men. Wealth and abundance in this kingdom is not an achievement. It is a trust from God. While others are clapping and, and listing their crowns and their achievements, you stand back with every sense of responsibility and you say, Lord, thank you. You are the one who has done this, and I return the glory to you. Have we gotten it so far? Now, the last thing I will talk about, at least for tonight, so that we can find somewhere to stop. I want to now teach on the laws. The laws of wealth and abundance. The kingdom is built on laws. A law refers to a modus operandi, a system of operation. 
listen to me the kingdom of god is systemic in its operation there is a governmental system there is how god administers power in this kingdom for instance in this kingdom the name that has been given that brings salvation and captures all authority is the name of jesus not jesus and joshua selman not jesus and preacher so the system for the administration of power in this kingdom in as much as it is through the ministry of the holy spirit but that power is from god there is no other name under heaven given to men the bible says by which we must be saved Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name, an office that is above every other name. So if you want to walk in authority in this kingdom, you must understand the system of administering the power of God. There is also an economic system in this kingdom. And it is based on laws. Laws. Laws represent the modus operandi. There is a way, there is a system for operating this mic. If I off it, I have violated the system that makes it amplify my voice when you understand this you will know truly like dr miles monroe would say that failure is predictable and wealth in the kingdom is also predictable so please pay attention as i just bring a balance and then share one or two things and we'll pray if god has blessed you so far please shout amen, amen. <sighs> ladies and gentlemen for a very long time there has been a conflict in the body of christ as to what the real keys for prosperity is in the kingdom all of these things are preliminaries they are foundations just trying to bring our thoughts to a level playing ground where we now begin to discuss the principles in uh, properly businessmen and men of god have had or spiritual leaders generally and businessmen have had a conflict for a very long time as to what the real ingredients that must be captured in the life of an individual are for that person to prosper. On one hand, we have spiritual leaders, in this case, men and women of God. And largely what we teach are spiritual principles, like tithing, giving, etc. And most times we have taught these principles as the only principle that is needed for the prosperity of the saints it doesn't mean the communicators are wrong people they are just incomplete in their knowledge and sadly you know we men of god sometimes in the body of christ we struggle with a lot of pride everybody wants to claim he knows everything and even in the midst of obvious ignorance we will still insist that we know what we are saying are we together so here is a man of god joshua selman teaching that there are only the spiritual principles nothing else so bring your type give and etc the moment you do that you must be blessed that is a very well-meaning statement but i stand by the authority of scripture and from the wisdom of men and women with proven track records to tell you it is not true it is a foundational truth but it is not all there is Follow me to the other side where we have businessmen, graduates from Yale, Oxford, Harvard, Stanford Business School, and all men and women, veterans in business who stand and listen to us and say, don't trust those people. They are scammers. They are teaching you nonsense. And they say, now let me teach you. Forget about God. You don't need to prosper. After all, there are many people who did not prosper. Just focus on other things like productivity, value, and that's it. And you do all of that, and just before your money comes, the devil will kill you. Are you seeing this now so you got all the knowledge and you ignored the spiritual leaders because they are speaking nonsense so they taught you and then you focus and just when you need to go and check in the bank you get up and your leg does not move again you get up and you cannot think again they ask you who is your name your wife says how are you my husband he said i don't know who you are and you are wondering what is wrong and they diagnose you in the hospital and they say you are absolutely healthy based on what the machine is saying are you seeing it now so who is wrong who might be wrong in this case the answer is both both are wrong in that they have refused to embrace one another as systems of completion are you seeing now so the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance are potent but not the only laws the business or you call them physical laws of wealth and abundance they teach them as though they are a dichotomy so if you want to do god thing come to church and learn giving if you now want to make sense and forget this superstition and build something that works leave church and settle no the bible does not teach that can i tell you both these physical laws and the spiritual laws all together as i teach the school of ministry students they are called kingdom laws they are two sides of the same coin 
So, when it has to do with the laws of the kingdom, there are therefore two dimensions to it. There are the spiritual laws that govern wealth and abundance. Non-negotiable. In order of priority, they come first. But there are also physical laws of wealth and abundance. We'll take that in the part two. But today, I'll just talk a bit about the spiritual laws within the next 15 minutes or thereabout that we have. And then, we're going to pray. Please, I want you to pay attention. These are potent laws. They are irrefutable. Backed up by God's own jealousy. They do not fail. Hallelujah. They do not fail. Please pray in the spirit in one minute and say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. In the name of Jesus, open my eyes. Light of the world, you step down to my darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. You're the light of my life. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes and let me see. That really is a prayer. Will you open my eyes, let me see. Will you open my eyes? Psalm 112, we're discussing the laws of kingdom wealth and abundance. It says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Psalm 112, 112. Psalm 112, from verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. Verse 2 says, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Next verse. It says, wealth and riches. Say amen. amen. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. He didn't say he will look for it. They will be in his house and yet his righteousness will still endure forever. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 is the scripture that the devil has used for many years to punish believers. This scripture has been greatly manipulated. It has been used by well-meaning, sincere preachers, sincere people as a way of discouraging people from having any passion for financial resources. Misquoted largely and then misinterpreted. The Bible says here, for the love of money, please look up. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Do you know what this means? That lust for money is the strengthener of every kind of evil desire. That means every evil desire is weak. When it collides with money, it can be strengthened. Do you know what this means? That means money helps to reveal the heart condition of a man. If a man is wicked, money can strengthen wickedness. This is what he's saying here. That money is the root. The root. The root means where it gets its nutrient and strength from. The love of money, it says, not money. The word love there is the Greek word that is translated eros. Eros means an ungodly affinity. An ungodly affinity. A desire that is inordinate. A desire that is not scriptural. This is what the Bible says is the root of all evil. That when you have an obsession for money to the point where nothing else matters, not even the purposes of God, you get to a point where you can kill, you can steal, you can destroy for money. He's saying you are in trouble. But the Bible never said money is the root of all evil. In fact, if anything, the Bible says money, answer it. The all thing there is within the context of what he was saying. There are things I can tell you money cannot do are we together so the kingdom is built on laws we have the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance and we have the physical laws please do not forget we have the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance and we have the physical laws for this part of our discussion as we attempt to conclude let's deal with the spiritual laws i will just touch on them i'm sure in another series god will grant us grace to go in depth but this is generally to bring awareness to our hearts you get the glory you get the praise because someone's life is changing you take the honor i just want to say thank you you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you 
So in my life, in my life, be glorified, be glorified. Are you ready for the first law? Hmm. The first law, whatever you don't understand, just be patient. Don't criticize, just be patient. For a very long time in the body of Christ, we have thought that the foundational law, foundational spiritual law, others have said tithing, others have said giving, others have said whatever, in order of priority, none of the aforementioned is the first law. The first law, the first spiritual law of wealth and abundance, write it down, is called the law of absolute surrender. The first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance is called the law of absolute surrender. The law of absolute surrender. Hmm. The law of absolute surrender. Job chapter 22, please. We'll start from verse 21. Job chapter 22. It says, acquaint now thyself with him, not with it, not with them, not businesses, and be at peace. Thereby, good shall come to you. Next verse. It says, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. He's teaching you how to prosper, and he's not mentioning any business. He's talking about the state of your heart. Down to 26. We're reading 26, 23 now. It says, if thou shalt return to the Almighty, ah, to prosper, I thought you didn't need God. Job is teaching us a principle here. If thou shalt return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, and thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. 24. Then thou shalt lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. Because when you prosper, you will have enemies. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shalt thou have thy delight. What? In your wealth? Your delight will be in who? The Almighty. And shall lift up thy face unto God. That means even with the abundance, your face will still be stayed on Him. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. The law of absolute surrender. My son... I don't need your tithe yet. I don't need your offering yet. I don't need any of those things from you. Don't remove your shoe and drop anything here. The first thing and the ultimate thing I need is not your business idea. Leave your brain, leave everything. What I need is your heart. My son, I don't trust you if your heart is still in your possession. Give me your heart. I know what money can do to you. You know, a lot of people say I'm humble based on what parameter? Who would have known that a little shepherd boy one day will kill somebody? Can I be very honest with you? Until God vets the state of your heart and concludes, don't trust whatever you think your heart tells you. The Bible says the heart is deceptive above all things and desperately wicked. Who would have known that a young boy will ignore his mother who gave birth to him one day simply because he has now become rich? Who would have believed that a young boy one day can stand and actually go and kill a human being and turn him upside down and drain the blood into a pot because he wants to make money. Can I tell you, the heart of man is dangerous. Until God vets you, you are not ready to do business with him. Very honest truth. The law of absolute surrender. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 5, speaking about the Macedonian church, it is true that Paul blessed them and all of that. But listen, he says, And this they did, not as we hoped, but they first gave of their own selves to the Lord. Can you see that there? The first thing they gave was their selves to the Lord and then unto us by the will of God before their substance. I submit to you by the authority of scripture that there are many people who are merely doing flesh-driven transactions in church. Most of our givings are not potent because they come from a heart that is not surrendered to Him. 
Just because you are dancing with offering, it doesn't matter whether it's offering, whether it's a goat, whether it's a bag of wood, it doesn't matter in what fashion it comes. If God does not have your heart, believe me, you are not ready to prosper God's way. The law of absolute surrender. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I have prayed many times and even as I'm on this stage now, as, as a man of God, I am praying it. That if there is anything God gives me that I cannot give him back, my prayer request is that may it never come to me. Don't say amen for me, I'm praying to God. You pray your own prayer and, and, and tell God and say, Lord, if you are going to give me a car, a house, an estate, an oil well, doesn't matter what it is. If it would take your heart away from God, take away your sanity, and make you too arrogant anything that makes your knees too far from the ground is dangerous for you if you started the journey with him on your knees even after 10 years as a billionaire let him find you on your knees whatever you ask this is the part that is not taught in church this is the part that is not taught in business seminars. Christian people stand. I don't mean to be sarcastic. But people just begin to teach about money. And they just swell the lust of people. You see a lot of people diving on cars. Because they want to claim it. Lie down on a car that you should be arrested. You lie down on somebody's car. Telling lies. All this fake living is because people are not surrendered. People still borrow money, give narratives that are not there. I'm showing you the kingdom's way. With the dignity of kingdom integrity, you can give him everything. Everything. That estate belongs to you. That oil well belongs to you. That company belongs to you. And mean it from your heart. Can I tell you one thing I know about God? Anytime you tell God, I give you anything, get ready. He must test you. There are things you tell God, you say, okay, I understand. But there are other things he says, I'm coming. What did you say is my own? Mention them. If you say Isaac is my own, I'm coming. Just because I left you in chapter 12 and the rest, I'm coming. When we get to chapter 22, I will tell you, take now thy son. Don't tell me he's the only one I know. Take him to a mountain and offer him as a bond offering. The Bible says Abraham got up early in the morning. This was his future. Can I tell you? You can drop a billion naira and yet not be surrendered. So I'm not even talking of money. I'm talking of a state where if everything leaves you and Jesus still remains, you still believe that you are valuable. Absolute surrender. If we do not teach this in church, I am telling you we are going to produce a crop of millionaires that will shock the kingdom negatively. Most of the people we think are humble are not humble. They are humbled, not humble. Why do you stand and talk foolishly when you don't have anything to defend what you are saying? So you keep quiet and look wise. But in the presence of economic empowerment, that's when you see the revelation of... There are people today, if they make as little as 10 million or 5 million or 1 million, they will not listen to anybody again. Including a man of God. Everybody lift your hands and <laughs> lift your hands for what? Um, I dropped. You, you see that kind of thing? There are many families where you can easily know when money has come and when money has gone. By the passion that is suddenly developed for devotions. And prayer. And all of this. You can know that there is trouble. There is one money that is hanging somewhere. And everybody now, a fast is declared. People start praying. When that money arrives, nobody even knows that it has arrived. Everybody just ignores God. No. What God is teaching us tonight is very powerful. 
And I, 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 I plead with the body of Christ, let us once again respect the place of surrender. More than tithing. You can bring tithe like a bribe from a carnal standpoint that just seeks to use God as a ladder and climb. You have wasted your money. That thing is donation. Can I tell you, the tray that carries your tithe is the purity of your heart. Not the, what you are dropping here. There are people who become wealthy people. You see, this is why I have profound respect for people who are wealthy in the kingdom and love Jesus Christ. Their heart and their, my regard and my respect for them has no bounds. There are people who will even go to Jesus like colleagues putting their hands in their pocket and say, I'm rich now. Come, talk to me. I need help. Answer me fast. I'm used to boys and orderlies around my life. Come and answer me. And Jesus says, this was not how you were. So what? I'm now blessed. Make up your mind and train everybody you know, yourself inclusive, to never be ashamed. Never be ashamed of surrendering everything to him. It's true. When your heart belongs to him, he can now trust you with anything and not be afraid. I was telling the school of ministry students that God is still looking for treasurers. His last official treasurer disappointed him. He's still looking for people to manage his money for him. It's easy for us to insult Judas and criticize Judas. But can I tell you the truth? Anybody who can trust you with money, truly, truly, you were a trustworthy person. At least at the moment. Out of all the 12 disciples, it was only Judas. Don't just criticize Judas. Study him. It's not easy to hold that kind of money and still be your... Uh, don't people steal money in church? Don't people steal money in offering baskets? Don't people steal money in weddings? Where they, they write blank check and people pocket it and God is watching? Can I tell you, having access to tremendous financial resources and still having your mind sane is profound stability profound stability next time you see a wealthy man who you know is wealthy by god and still has his mind his sense of decorum respect discipline sanity don't just pray for that person that person deserves your honor because i can tell you this money thing has its own power for jesus to say you can choose only two options either serve god or serve money he didn't say serve satan Many people have disappointed God with this finance thing. God wants you to be exempted from that. There are many of us God has trusted with certain levels of things. You were loving God and worshipping Him. You were a worker in church. The moment you became wealthy. This was the foolishness of Solomon. He got to a point where he forgot the God of his father. When he now increased and he had many. Look at his confession in Ecclesiastes. He said, everything my eyes saw that I want, I got. What sort of a man is that? And he said, here is the conclusion of reading many books, there is no end. And much study is only a weariness to the soul. This is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commands. For this is the whole duty of man. Vanity upon vanity, he said. All is vanity. Are we together now? This spiritual law, absolute surrender. You can put your checkbook on the ground, put your ATM cards on the ground, put all the papers of your assets on the ground, and lie down above them and say, Father, you are exalted above it too. Above it too. And the devil says, Don't fall your hand. Don't forget that you are such a great man. And you say, No, I'm great because I'm able to lie down and worship. What was Satan looking for? Not money. He said, can you bow down and worship me? And I will give you this. If you can find my message, please go on our YouTube page, Koinonia Global. Follow my message, even as thy soul prospereth. I love him with my heart. And I continue to pray that he will grant me grace. That all these little, little increases that we're experiencing here and there, that God will grant us grace to still love him and remain and love him passionately that the first thing that we communicate to our world is not our skill our gift our prowess but our heart for god i cast my crown before 
the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Your royal majesty. Yabone nakao, Sujata ne nakao, Sir King Salama, the Prince of Peace. Can you still cast your crown when you become an elder? It was not the young men that casted their crowns. The Bible says the 20 and 4 elders. Whatever made them an elder, we know that an elder is one who has cheated time. An elder is one who has put wisdom in time. Added experience in time. Added a legacy in time. Tell you, I have still not found a reason to stop tithing. I have examined the thoughts across boards. Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 30. The reason why people argue about tithe is number one, because they think tithe is about money. Tithe is not about money. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. This has nothing to do with a dispensation. This is an ordinance. Let me submit to you. There are two reasons why I think the tithe issue has become a controversy in the body of Christ. Number one, and is because of the way we men of God drum it. We drum it because we need the money and because there have been a, a lot of misuse and extravagance with God's money. People have played all kinds of games with God's money at the expense of people's sacrifices. And not everybody in church, uh, people, God's people are not dummies. When they watch and they see that the value you are, pro you are producing does not match the kind of affluence and extravagance you are communicating, someone will be sensitive enough to ask questions. And because a tithe is a tenth portion, there is nothing to hide about tithe. Tithe, financially speaking, is a tenth portion of what you bring. And let me tell you, if that is combined from faithful people, it is a lot. Bankers, am I right? It is a lot. What is there to hide? Tithe was supposed to be a mechanism. Listen to me. According to scripture, the tithe was supposed to be a mechanism to cater for priesthood and to cater for the building of the Lord's house. To cater for priesthood. Remember, there was a time when the children of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, are we Bible students, that while they were boiling the meat, they were given the privilege of using a fork to pick without looking. The scene there became when they now started opening the whole pot and they would look for the choice part of the meat and use it. And God said, no, this is not. I gave you the privilege to at least pick something. Now, there are all kinds of policies and principles. I'm not going into the legalities of ministries and Christian organizations and all of that. But I can tell you it is because of the annoyance of people from the carelessness, the recklessness, and the misuse of God's money. This is what has led people into this anger that has evolved into this campaign. There are a few people who have intelligently studied 
And based on their conclusion, they feel this is not needed. But I tell you, the root of most of this tight problem has come because of an, a, a level of integrity that has not been effectively communicated. Are we together? But I submit to you, and as far as it is within the jurisdiction of this spiritual family, I can tell you, be a faithful tither. Tithe is a tenth portion, according to scripture, one tenth. Now, I know that a lot of people have thought to bring 50% of your tithe, 80% of your tithe. The Bible does not say that. If God tells you personally, it is a personalized dealing. Don't create a doctrine out of it and punish people. Within the boundary of contentment and vision, 10% of what God's people bring should be sufficient to run the activities of the ministry within the boundary of contentment, vision, and integrity. Are we learning? Yes, sir. So let me encourage you, based on the truth of scripture I have learned, based on the experience of veterans who have, been, who have truly prospered by God, I can tell you, do not stop tithing. If you don't have the revelation, settle down and get the revelation. Don't do it religiously. But as far as this house is concerned, as a ministry, we're a tithing ministry. As an individual, I'm a tithing person. And I can tell you, tithe is not about money. It is called the law of open heavens. According to Malachi chapter 3, when you begin to read from verse 8, it says, will a man rob God? It says, but ye say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. So the Bible is talking about robbery here. It says, ye are cursed with a curse. This is not the curse of the law. No. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10. It says, bring ye how many? All the tithes into my storehouse. In another series, we'll have the time to discuss what storehouse is. Because there are three platforms that qualify to be called a storehouse. In fact, I think I should just say it in one minute. Number one, a storehouse means your place of primary spiritual nourishment. It qualifies. It is the first biblical platform that is called a storehouse. Your place of primary spiritual nourishment. Number two, a storehouse also refers to any ministry that is committed to the salvation of souls and the transformation of lives. These two things must be there. If it is not actively committed to the salvation of souls and the equipping of the saints, it does not qualify to be called a storehouse. It's an uncomfortable truth, but this is the truth. And then number three, the storehouse can also by extension refer to an individual, a minister who is committed to the salvation of souls and the equipping of the saints. There are conditions where an individual can be regarded as a storehouse. These are the three. Just take it like this for now. In another series, as God grants us grace, we'll open deeper into this. I just didn't want to leave that gray area. But it says, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here we say the Lord. There are seven prophetic blessings according to scripture here that follow the title. Number one, God will open for you the windows of heaven. Number two, you will, you will pour out a blessing that you will not have room enough for it. Fathers like Kenneth Copeland will call it concepts, insights, and ideas. Next verse, it says, I will rebuke the devourer. The third, the devourer is a waster that comes to bring all kinds of waste on legal basis to your life. Number four, he says he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you plant. Can be your business, can be your life. And then number five, he said, neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. Number six, he says you shall be called, you shall be a delightsome land. Please go to, um, all nations shall call you blessed, verse 12. And ye shall be a delightsome land. Seven prophetic blessings according to scripture. When Jesus was rebuking the scribes and the Pharisees for their being hypocritical, he did not negate the subject of tithing. He said, you tithe and you do all of these things and you negate the weightier matter. So Jesus identified this as part of the things that the believers should know. Tithe is very important. Number three. So number one is the law of absolute surrender. Number two is the law of the tithe. And then number three is called the law of giving. You can put in bracket the law of seed time and harvest. These are the three spiritual laws principally. Now under the law of seed time and harvest, there are so many, I don't want to run into it this night. But then it's sufficient for you to know that the law of giving, the law of seed time and harvest is a foundational spiritual law. Are we together now? Very important. 
Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. We read it earlier. Here's what it says. It says, give. And it shall be given unto you. So the Bible states clearly here that when you give, it shall be given unto you. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. We're rushing for time. This was Noah after the flood. And a proclamation came from heaven on account of the sacrifice that he reared. It says, while the earth remained, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. This is an ordinance that will last while the earth remains. That means anytime you don't find the earth, stop obeying the law. But provided you can see the earth, you should know the law is in force. What is seed time and harvest? It means that the economic system of the kingdom runs on the principle of seed time and harvest, spiritually speaking. That anything you do not have, it is because you did not plant the seed for it. And seed here does not mean money. If you want a harvest of kindness, sow the seed of kindness. If you want, there are seeds and their corresponding harvests. Honor. Listen carefully. Honor is the seed for a harvest called access. Good understanding is the seed for a harvest called favor. Diligence, listen carefully, is the seed for what we call lifting. So it is about understanding seeds and harvest. A question is the seed for an answer. Knowledge and wisdom are the keys for enlightenment. Are we together now? There are different kinds of giving. The Bible now switches to let us know that giving and receiving is sowing and reaping. That in this kingdom, every time you give, you are a farmer who is sowing. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We'll start from verse 6. So we've identified the fact that the Bible talks about giving and receiving. It says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Go ahead, seven. It says every man, here is the condition, and this is the cure for manipulation and control in the church. Every man according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Verse eight, and God, by reason of your sowing, have you seen that he's talking about sowing and reaping? Now he turns to giving and receiving. So in the kingdom, one of the ways that we sow is by giving. One of the ways that we reap is by receiving. He says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. Can I be honest with you? Ask anybody who God has lifted in the kingdom. If you do not engage the law of giving and receiving, there is a limit in fact, you may not be able to rise to certain realms. Now, there are different kinds of givings with different levels of harvest allocated to them. Let me just run down. I may not have the time to explain them. Our time is already spent. Forgive me. We have what we call the worship offering. According to Deuteronomy 16, 16, the Bible says to not come before him empty. I'm trying to run very quickly. So there is what we call the worship offering. That when you come before God, it is not a compulsion. It's out of revelation that you should not come to the house of God empty. Based on revelation as proof of your love for him. So there is the worship offering. Number two, there is what we call kingdom investments. This is one of the major giving platforms that fulfills the spiritual law of wealth and abundance. Haggai chapter 1, I believe. Am I right on that? Yes. When you read from verse 2 and 3, Haggai, the prophet was speaking, chapter 1 from verse 2 and 3. He says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Verse 3. He says, Am I right on that? Verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Aha, uh -huh, next verse, let's see. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Kingdom investment. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. He says, ye have sown much, and bring in little. This is the result. Ye eat, but have not enough. Ye drink, but are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earned wages, only earned wages to put it into a bag that has holes. What is the message here? That your, your participation in the Lord's work 
You shouldn't wait until there is a call. By the way, there is absolutely nothing wrong in calling people to give, provided the needs are clear, the revelation is there, and it is done within the boundary of integrity. The key word always is integrity. Are we together? There is nothing wrong with a man. I have gone to many places to preach and the people have come together and raised an offering to honor me and I have blessed them and prayed even in my secret place that God will bless them. There are times that the, the, the Lord, a church can agree together and put resources together and say, look, come and so. We've done this as a ministry and I'm sure that we'll still do it as the days come. Soon we're going to be looking at our building project and God will grant us that grace. So there is nothing wrong. The key word is integrity and truth. Are we blessed? Kingdom investments. There are others like seed faith. Connecting your seed and your, your faith through a seed for a desired expectation. It's based on the principle of resurrection. The Bible says that every seed can die. And that not only do you reap what you sow. God is able to give your seed another body. You can sow shame and reap joy. You can use your seed to kill negative seasons in your life. I have taught this. The principle of seed faith is based on the principle of resurrection. The same way the old heaven and the old earth can pass away, you can use a seed and take a season that you don't like out of your life. You can tie it by faith. This is why it is dangerous to steal money in church because that money you see is only a tray. There are people putting courses on it, putting all kinds of yoke seasons that they want out of their life. When you steal money from church, you don't allow the seed to die. Ask Gehazi and Naaman. Just because leprosy left Naaman did not mean it went away. It was waiting. And a man used a seed to bring it back to his life. I have used this as a principle. There are many people who have used the principle of seed faith. There are others like prophet offering. When I said it during the school of ministry, the students were laughing. Prophet offering. Because that one has brought a lot of trouble. You know, we men of God, sometimes because we need money, we drum the issue of prophet offering. But the truth is that prophet offering... Is true. You can actually use a seed ethically. Uh, I, I wish I'm not the one who has to say this. But generally, according to scripture, you should not really go to meet a man empty-handed. It is scriptural, but it's just that those who have taught it, have taught it, they've robbed enough kinds of biases that makes it to look untrue. But it is true. As much as possible, it's a kingdom culture you should learn. Especially a man of God who has labored obviously in word and doctrine. As much as possible. This is not to make you uncomfortable in any way here. But I am telling you, I owe you to teach you the truth. I have never gone to meet any man of God. In fact, in principle, it is not my culture to meet people and not sow into their lives. Then there is sowing to parents, both spiritual and physical, that attracts patriarchal blessings. These are different levels of giving. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother in the Lord, that your days may be long and that it shall be well with you. These are principles. There is the principle of first fruit that has largely been misunderstood in, in many circles, respectfully speaking. But I believe that principle is valid and again within the boundary of revelation and truth, that principle can be engaged. There are many others, sacrifice, vows. So all of these are there. But let me tell you, there are three that I know by revelation and by scripture that are directly related to the lifting of men. One is kingdom investments. Being act, an active participant in the work of the kingdom. Number two, prophet offering. If done with revelation and understanding, you can sow into an anointing that will lift you in a way that will surprise you. God gave gifts to men. And these gifts did not come empty. And then number three, seed faith. Where you can tie an expectation to end seasons and open others. These three I have practiced in my life and have revealed to many who have practiced this ministry. Has practiced this. Kingdom investments, prophets offering and seed faith. Lend me five minutes. Let's wrap up. Please write this. The return channels. There are return channels. When you practice the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance, certain things begin to happen in your life. There are three principal ways that God answers to you as touching your obedience to spiritual laws. Three return channels. Are you ready? Number one, favor with God and men. 
This is the first return channel to the saints. If and when they practice this, favor is powerful. The proof of favor is not just money. The proof of favor is access to the hearts of kings. Access to the hearts of men. Favor is programmable. Number two, wisdom. The second return channel that comes to you on account of activating these spiritual laws. Ah, my God. Somebody's life is changing. Oh, 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 because listen the kind of favor that will come next when it starts coming don't tell lies and say you don't know what you did it is explainable hmm. Hmm. the songs of joy so the first return channel favor what is favor men willing to participate in your success men Every time, man, wait for my teaching, the gift of man. Oh, I have it. There's a teaching that is coming. The Bible says, what is man that you are mindful of? Here's how I read that scripture. What is in man? What did you hide in man that men are not seeing? What did you hide in man? Opportunities. What did you hide in man? Anointings. What did you hide in man? Track records. It's all hidden in man. Please do not downplay the place of favor. Every time you touch your pocket and you see money, generally speaking, there are only two ways money comes into your hand. Favor and value. We are coming there. Only. The favor of God is powerful. You can sleep in the prison one night and wake up a prime minister because favor was upon you. Can I tell you, many of us who are trusting God for land and structural establishment, above and beyond savings it is the favor of god that gives men land psalms 44 verse 3 i can tell you god can favor you into establishment read with me if you are a christian one to go for they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thine arm the light of thy countenance why because thou hast a favor unto them when favor is upon you, the only person who cannot bless you is a blind person. Because the moment they can see you, it's a charm-like force of attraction that compels men to participate in your success. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. B part says, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Even the king, verse 17, could not reject her. The Bible says the king loved Esther above all the women. She obtained grace and favor in his sight. He set a royal crown on her hand and made her to be queen instead of Vashti. Exodus chapter 3 from verse 21. It has become an anthem here in Koinonia. May that work in your life. And I will give Joshua Selman favor in the sight of everyone in Abuja and Nigeria and anywhere. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Emptiness has an explanation. It means the favor of God is not at work in your life. You don't do bold face for favor. If it is not there, it is honestly not there. When favor is there, it speaks immediately. When the favor of God is on you, even a fish will swallow coin for your sake and come and bring it near you. Can a fish bite coin? But not when the master has need of it. Somebody will drop a donkey at the middle of the road and keep it for you there. Say, lose that coat. If they ask you, say the master had need of it. A coat that no man had ridden. Why? Because he increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Number two is wisdom. Wisdom has five dimensions, but two of them are most important when it has to do with wealth. Divine direction and divine strategies. These are the dimensions of wisdom required for wealth. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
Elihu said in chapter 2 and verse 8 of Job, he said, but there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty maketh men of understanding. When you read Job chapter 29, the first four verses, Job began to give us the secret of his financial exploits. And he says, oh, that I was in the days of my youth. He says, when God preserved me, verse 3, he says, when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light i walked through darkness and now he begins to list all the things that happened to him the young men saw him and stood up the old men refrained from talking princes saw him they bowed everybody say wisdom the bible says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom it says does not wisdom cry by me kings reign and princes decree justice the bible says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness there is a relationship between wisdom and wealth number three the third key is the blessing the blessing what the bible calls the blessing the activation of the blessing in your life Business people have called this all kinds of names. They've called it the law of attraction. They've called it all kinds of things. We call it in the kingdom, the blessing. The blessing is a very powerful spiritual quality that functions like a magnet. It has an assignment of attracting to your life people, opportunities, and resources. The blessing is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit that rests upon a believer activated by engaging these principles the assignment to bring to your life listen to me if i throw nails here please look up we're wrapping up koinonia if i throw metallic nails here think how laborious it will be to pick all of them one by one all i need to do is to bring a serious magnet and just run it around and every one of it will come that magnetic property men can exhibit it are we together now? Please believe what I'm telling you. That you can be in a city where it looks like everybody is a giver. It just depends on what is on you. The same person who will refuse to give you will carry one million and tell somebody, can I have the privilege of honoring you? So is that person greedy? It's just relative to what is on you. You can step into a city and every good thing begins to gravitate towards you. Again, resources both human and material opportunities there are people it's only when good things want to happen that you just suddenly find them there they didn't just come there there is a grace called the blessing it draws them there are we together and this is what is coming on someone just you sat down in this it's not just a lecture you have been receiving ladies and gentlemen you will leave this place and suddenly someone who did not call you for three four years you see 20 missed calls and you are wondering why don't no, I, i'm giving perspective to your experiences so that you don't just thank god in ignorance you know the name of what happened to you then you can help others grow too can i be honest with you i prayed these things in my life because i knew that without these things ministry will be it will be as if god didn't send you you know what it means to do ministry in this city Without this revelation, you are in trouble. Except if you want to serve Satan or go to an idol. Apostle, I came from a background where no one has risen in our family, economically speaking. We all love Jesus, but it looks like nothing seems to happen. I bring you a word of hope. In this kingdom, we know that there is hope for a tree. What I've taught you now has nothing to do with being a preacher, being a businessman. We have not even this. You see that we've not mentioned anything business. Let me tell you this. When you engage, the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance are responsible for the arrival of financial resources in your life. Then the physical laws of wealth and abundance are responsible for the management and the multiplication of financial resources. Are you seeing the roles that they play? When you are looking for financial resources, it is engaging the spiritual laws that bring them to your life. Then when they now come, if the only thing you know are the spiritual laws, you will keep having momentary breakthroughs, one testimony, and then you have another one next year. Everything God gives, gives man, he gives, he simulates that operation and plants in it the principle for continuity. 
it is called the ability to replenish. You cannot be wealthy if you are only fruitful. You must sustain the ability to replenish. Hallelujah. Please hear me. You may have come from a background where the whole family was in a room with rain leaking and yet in your dreams and your visions you see yourself standing before nations feeding nations funding the work of the kingdom building churches single-handedly the way out is not just to do business before business the way out is not just investments believe me when i tell you this the way out is not just a job the first principle is this revelation all wealth comes from god and belongs to him all wealth comes from god it will reach me from men or through men to me and that the wealth and the abundance in this kingdom i'm only given stewardship over it therefore i remain humble and grateful and then you understand that the kingdom is founded on laws not superstition this is where africa keeps getting cheated does god perform miracles i believe that absolutely does god perform financial miracles absolutely but he has set in motion a principle and tied it to the earth it will not change absolute surrender the law of the tithe the law of open heavens the law of giving and you release this tree favor comes for you wisdom comes for you the blessing that is already upon you is activated through your obedience to these laws and all of a sudden financial resources begin to come to you one man coming as sent by god can hold your hands and you can climb a ladder that took people 10 years literally in one day it took 430 years to be in captivity but ladies and gentlemen it did not even take up to one day that night could not the king sleep and then he drove them out and gave them gold and gave them silver and gave them everything they left with joy and honor and dignity how about mordecai that night could not king ahazaro sleep and he said bring me the chronicles when they opened it who is in the chamber there and it was that beast called haman he said what should be done to such a, such a man and haman thought he was himself so he gave the best recommendation god knows how to lift you yours is to trust him and just to obey please rise up on your feet please rise up on your feet participate in this prayer for the next two minutes you're on your way to better days you're on your way to better days it's a prophetic word for someone you're on your way to better days regardless your background you're on your way to better days status is changing it's no more decline you're on your way to better days. Take a sight in one minute to yourself. Status is changing. Slow more decline. You're on your way to better days. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way. To better days. There's only one prayer point for tonight. And then I make the altar call and we're done. One prayer point. Now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Please lift your voice and obtain the grace to do. 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 Are you praying? The grace to do. Shalika parus katebelekata. Shande malas katebahasku brandi katala. The grace to do. All the overflows. Are you praying? following online are you praying i obtain the grace to study this afresh the grace to understand indeed in this season in addition to all that he's given me he grants unto me the power to get well through knowledge through sound exegesis of the truth someone is praying Days of delay come to an end. Days of financial retrogression come to an end. Regardless my background, regardless my past, I find a new path to a glorious destiny. 
believe that you have watched and listened to the message of the Lord through the mouth of his servant. I want you to believe every word and declaration and prayer that was uttered. And that word that God speaks to your heart while listening to it, put them into art. Put them to practice and live by the word of the Lord and live a faithful Christian life and prepare yourself for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom and remain blessed. Subscribe to this channel. God bless you.